Uh, yeah, so I, I so when I moved here, my father died, and unfortunately, I wanted to call him up and say, "Hey, Dad, they finally got me. I'm on the meat call." <laughs> you can appreciate that. Anyways, we welcome you to our school. This is uh, really different from what you guys had. So, yeah, I mean, as those of you who haven't been around in a while, our eyes are really opening. Uh, just in the four years I've been here, uh, the place has grown tremendously, changed my ways. And, Garrett's the old dog here now, and he's been here, how long have you been here? 15 years, so he came in right after you guys left, some of you guys left, and uh, so I know he's very interested in hearing what you have to say. I'm just curious, how many of you... Bird didn't even have a name. Bird Air. Bird Air, that's right. Bird Air. Those fathers, so, you know, slitted each other in the hallway and right. right. but, but then they said, oh yeah, we're not <laughs> So, um, as I was arriving with uh, my freshly minted uh, private pilot's license, uh, the ambassador, who was a godly chap, <laughs> You're so clever. his name was McMurtry Godly, and uh, he, in his infinite wisdom, he decided that it was time for the pilot community to be able to take their families up country to show them what they did for a living. And so he allowed the formation of a flying club. It was called the Vintin Flying Club. And I was one of the first members with my new pilot's license. And I quickly got a, a flight instructor's rating uh, while, while we lived here uh, with FAA and stuff approval. Uh, and uh, the, you know, kids generally will take one science class because it's a requirement uh, for graduation and two years of a foreign language, which is another requirement. And uh, so I was having trouble uh, recruiting kids for the science class. And uh, I offered a course in aerospace science, which the, you know, the pilot children's community uh, they thought, oh wow, this is great, and I would teach them how to fly. And uh, so we would uh, have classes, and they thought, uh, you know, there, there won't be any algebra, or there are no, you know, physics, or any chemistry, or anything like that. Of course, I taught them uh, all about weather, meteorology, and they had to learn how to navigate by the stars, and we had classes at night. Uh, they were all using their sextants and doing the geometry. They didn't know it was geometry, but they all got very good at geometry. They all got very good at chemistry because of the uh, weather. And uh, you were mentioning the white spot in the road in, on the way to Bianc Van Bien. Well, that was our cross-country route. We would fly mm -hmm. from Lima 01, which is Vientiane, up to Lima 08, which was Hong Bing. And then we would fly over to a place called Paksang and land. And it was a triangular route. And uh, we had more kids sign up for that class than either my physics classes, <laughs> my chemistry <laughs> classes, or my biology <laughs> classes. And they all came in on Saturdays to learn more. <laughs> well, I, I guess I'd have to ask, was it that dangerous flying? I mean, would it be? <laughs> well, it wasn't going to be that specific. <laughs> I mean, uh, with, with what was going on here at the time, how dangerous was it? Not at all. I think uh, anywhere uh, south of uh, Van Dien and, uh, and west of the Plain of Jars and west of North of Uso. We only got shot at a couple of yeah, we only had a couple of them. We got a small plane flight down to the new line this earlier this year. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. And on the way down there, we were looking at all the little spots. You can see all the craters. All the craters from the models came. It's pretty close to the trail. Yeah. And uh, so those are all now fish ponds. Right. Bomb craters. Bomb craters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, same thing. Very good. Actually, we had a very good idea. And they built a very good place. Yeah. Well, I'm taking that shot at it. Um, I arrived in Vientiane in uh, fall of 
six and right during the flood. And as I went down the Brittany steps with my high to take that little boat with the boat across, um, I was told you cannot go in to the end chan. And I said, you know, I'm gonna teach tomorrow. <laughs> and so I, I went in and I was part of the last car that drove in before the compound was totally surrounded by water. And um, of course, we didn't have school, and my job was to uh, man the radio back in the school. I was kind of like a communication site or nothing. And um, one of the first calls I got was from the Red Cross in Washington, D.C., um, who had been contacted frantically by a family from Dayton, Ohio, wondering if their daughter had ever made it to the end And I assured them that, yes, I had made it. <laughs> I was new and there was a quite a wonderful group of single people living in the, the little barrack, uh, single apartment units. And a knock on the door and I opened it to a new friend and she was dancing around and what the heck? And um, there was a snake that went under the rat can and wrapped around and someone else came in and, you know, used the meat cleaver on it and pinched it out. And someone else came by and knocked on the door and said, where did that quake come from? Well, the, um, with the high waters coming up, the snakes were going to the high places and had gone in the lintel over the door. And when the door opened, the quake you know, came down. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we had to have school on Saturdays to make up for the time lost. And uh, about maybe third or fourth week into school, I allowed um, I said, I can go smart fireworks. And this one little new safe voice said, Oh, Miss Lily, I think it's a coup. We should get under our desks. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and we did. And, um, so um, it was just, it was exciting times to be in and teaching the children and the families were wonderful. And um, it's thrilling to be back. I haven't been back since it's 45 years. Thank you.